It doesn't matter what you say to them. They're taking you to the custody oh. block, mate. Young kids. Young kids. Yeah. I say to them, before you pull that trigger or before you think you can go stab someone and they will die, they, there's a chance they can die. So before you go and do that, lock yourself up in your bathroom. Stay there for 23 hours. Haters are motivators. Haters are good because haters point out your flaws and your weaknesses. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. Welcome back to another episode of Cashflow Convos. Today we are here in Birmingham with a special guest, Mr. Ahmed Yakub. How you doing, bro? How's it going? How's it going man? Asalaamu As Alaikum, brothers. Well, Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you very much for coming down all the way. You know what I mean? You come down from far. I appreciate the time. Everybody's time is important. Time is the most important gift yeah, they definitely. can give to somebody. And you've given me that. Thank you very much. So we want to kickstart this podcast. Tell us about your childhood, your upbringing, and a bit, little bit about your background. Born and bred in Birmingham, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, background, uh, studied here in Birmingham. I went to Wolverhampton University. And uh, after that, studied in the College of Law. It's called the University of Law now. Then I started working. Yeah, okay. But during that time as well, working, I was, during studying, I was also working. I used to have a, I've been doing bits and bobs all my life before I got into law full time. Okay. So what, what like uh, made you get into like law? The main thing was a incident took place when we were quite young when one of my mates went to prison for a long time. Uh, and I thought he was mistreated. And if he was represented properly, then the results could have gone a bit different and uh, he wouldn't have done nine years in custody. That was one of the main reasons. So that was and I, th I think law is a profession where, you know, you can raise your voice and you can say things and you will be heard yeah. and you will be take, you know, taken seriously. Yeah. Uh, no disrespect to anybody, but if uh, I was to um, speak up my... You know, what, my voice will be heard rather than someone who's just working. Um, but I, I don't want to disrespect anyone or sound arrogant, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You know exactly what I mean. Someone making a McDonald's, for example. Yeah. You know, I want you to be heard, and it? it can be heard. You deal with a lot of um, people, a lot of cases. So how's your relationship with the police? You must be dealing with them on a regular basis. Mm. The police are lovely. Yeah. And respect where respect is due, credit where credit is due. I, I made a video today about the Greater Manchester Police thanking them. Okay. For, can I, I'll have a look at it now and <laughs> exactly what I said. It was on TikTok anyway. But, um, sorry, that's just my video. This is a thank you message for the Greater Manchester Police after they thanked us and described our firm as a very professional defense team and refreshing to deal with after our client was found not guilty for a conspiracy to murder at manchester crime court a huge thank you to all the officers who were involved in the investigation and did a great job always remember there's a defense for every offense so i love the police the police have a job to do yeah. their job is to investigate and part of that investigation is to arrest somebody, to search their property, to interview someone. Yeah. Then they pass the case over to the Crown Prosecution Service, the CPS. The CPS, their job is to prosecute people. So they will want to get convictions out of people. And then we're involved. Our, our job is to defend people, defend defendants or people who are suspected of doing crimes. Okay. And all of us guys, all three have a function mm. within proceedings, criminal proceedings. The police is to investigate, the prosecution is to prosecute, and others is to defend. And there's two other functions. One of that function is the function of a jury. All right. The jury are the people who decide if someone is guilty or not. Oh, okay. And the jury is a panel of 12 members, upstanding members of the community with no previous convictions. They decide whether someone 
is guilty or not guilty. I don't decide, the police don't decide, and the prosecution don't decide. The fifth function in criminal proceedings or criminal trial is that of a judge. The judge directs the jury after hearing both sides of the evidence, both sides of the case, both versions of the case, yeah. the defense and the prosecution, then the judge gives a direction to the jury as to how a conviction can be met or if certain elements or issues, strands are not met, then that results in a acquittal, which is a not guilty plea. Okay. So you learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard about that. But, um, so uh, yeah, speaking of the police, so uh, have you ever been like, arrested before? Yes, I've been arrested before, yes. What was that for? <laughs> Uh, once when I was very little, it was for a possession of a um, offensive weapon. Nothing come off me. I was very young. The second time was again very young okay. for a um, fight, a fray. Again, nothing come off it. And uh, the third time was a bit more recent. I can't really go into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I haven't done anything wrong or anything like that. Okay, okay, nice, nice. So what's the worst things to do uh, if you were being detained or arrested? So what would your advice be? Worst thing, the main thing is sometimes people start talking too much. If a police officer is going to arrest you, no matter what you say to him on that, on the, at that moment of time, it, it won't change his decision or her decision. They will still take you to the police station. So people, one of the main mistakes people make when being arrested is talking too much. They will start saying, no, I wasn't even there at that time. No, I didn't do anything. No, you've got the wrong person. It doesn't matter what you say to them. They're taking you to the custody oh, black, mate. Yeah. Stay silent and be cooperative. And you will go to the police station and you'll get ample time to speak to a solicitor and ample time to talk if a solicitor or your legal representative advises you to talk in the interview, you can have others to talk. So don't talk. Once you've been arrested, just put your head down, be calm about the situation and just go to the police station. Just go. How did Maurice Andrews come? Your name is Mr. Ahmed Yacoub. How did that Maurice come Andrews about? Solicitors is a firm that I used to work for. Okay. Uh, from 2014 is when I started here. I worked here until 2016 and eventually became the director. In 2000, and so just 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 at the end of 2016, I'll take I took over. Is Mr. Andrews still about, or Mr. Wait. Andrews is still about? Yeah, he's retired. Okay. Uh, in Jamaica, he does come back now and again. He's a good guy. I spoke oh. to him that day actually on on a video call. Yeah. Lovely guy. Alhamdulillah, made me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> made me. So so, what's the like the worst cases that you've dealt with? There's loads of cases. I mean, uh, as something that I. First, when I took over this firm, it wasn't even one of my cases. It was a case that uh, it, it was a transition. It was a transition during the transition period from Morris having the firm to myself taking over. That case basically came with it. And it was a murder case and it was, it was something uh, very disturbing. Uh, the murder case was uh, basically a, the defendant who had just been released from prison not long ago. Mm. He, he was a patient, he was a mental uh, patient. Um, he was treated in a hospital after his release from prison, I think maybe a year after or something. Yeah. He, he had a liking for the nurse, he followed okay. the nurse home. Find out where she lives, a couple of hours later, he is seen going to her address with a ladder on his shoulder. Oh, really? he, puts the ladder, climbs, puts the ladder by the house, climbs up the ladder straight into the woman's um, bedroom. He rapes her. Then she wakes up, he strangles her with the tights and sets the house on fire. Her mother wakes up from downstairs and um, he strangles her too. Oh, that's crazy. By that time, the fire engine or the ambulance have turned up. The mother survived, the daughter passed away. That was a bad case to look at. And of course, the guy never had no defense. He was mentally disturbed, to be fair. We see all sorts. One of the worst cases that I've seen that I thought that justice could have got served or, you know, it wasn't right. I felt the result wasn't the right result. Uh, it was a case in 2019, 20, I think, mm -hmm. where 
my client, he was accused of um, rape and grooming. I'm going to come on to that. It's a very, this topic is quite hot in the so in, in media right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. So he was accused of grooming. We managed to prove that on one of the occasions that he was meant to have groomed this woman, he wasn't even in the country. He was out of the country. Okay. And he was six, 15 at the time himself, or 16. We managed to prove that, and the prosecution accepted that, and the judge, you know, said to the prosecution that you must drop that case. Mm. They still proceeded with the other victim. So if one was lying, and, and their stories were so corroborating, it's like they were talking about the same thing. Yeah. Similar stories. So yeah. it shows that sometimes it doesn't matter what defense team you have as well, you know. So how do you deal with it? Because it, uh, surely it must like, affect you like mentally. It affects mentally. See, look, when you are a criminal lawyer, I don't think you have much of a conscious. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can practice criminal law if you have a conscious. Uh, because it'll be hard. It is hard to sleep at night, regardless. <laughs> no. uh, but uh, if you have a conscious, it'll be very hard to go to sleep. If you think too much about the results that you get, it'll be very hard to sleep. You have to become immune to it. I work very hard on my cases, but I also know that I can't control the results. The only thing I could do is put my best into a case. And if I put my best into a case, yeah, then the rest is up to the jury to decide. I can't control the decisions. I always say I'm a magician. I'm not a legal tactician. Oh, sorry, I'm not a magician. Yeah. I'm a legal <laughs> tactician. What about the biggest case you've ever done? There's too many. There's too it's many. Uh, for example, most recently, uh, I've had a acquittal on a big drugs conspiracy in, in Derby Crown Court. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't even an acquittal. The the prosecution actually dropped the case just okay. before the trial. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry, a conspiracy mm -hmm. to murder as well. That was in Manchester Crown Court. Uh, that's a very interesting case, actually. The client came to see me where the prosecution on that case were attributing a certain phone number to my client. My client, who was represented by someone else initially, said to his legal representative at the time, look, I'm innocent. He was met with the response. There are a lot of innocent people in prison. His family contacted me. Uh, the pr prosecution were attributing a number to him. He was saying that number is not mine. I was somewhere else. Look, I was somewhere else on the time this took place. He was put forward as alibi, but his legal representative at the time did not um, did not let him put forward a alibi. So he was met with the response that there are a lot of innocent people in prison. Anyway, I got into the case. I realized he kept saying, hey, look, I've got alibi witnesses. So I took statements of the alibi witnesses. Mm. They confirmed where he was on the night of the case, uh, on, the, on the night that the actual um, offense took place. They confirmed that he wasn't at the scene. Anyway, that was our witnesses. The prosecution, of course, we're not going to uh, take that as gospel and say, yes, we agree. The prosecution is still saying, no, we don't believe it. Yeah. His number is this number that we're saying. He kept, we kept saying that's not his number. Anyway. We got to trial, Manchester Crown Court. <clears throat> trials, criminal trials, there's two parts to it. Okay. Prosecution case, and then there's a defense case. Okay, okay. After the prosecution case is finished, we as defense lawyers can make an application to the judge. Mm. It's called an application of no case to answer. So we can say to the judge that there is no point or the evidence is not strong, strong enough in this case for you to allow this case to be uh, tried by a jury. Mm -hmm. So we are saying to the judge that, Your Honor, we believe that there isn't sufficient evidence for this to be left in the jury's hands. Okay, okay, okay. We're asking you to make a decision. And on that occasion, the judge agreed with us and said the decision that I make is the jury will have to say not guilty. So he directed the jury to say not guilty in that case. Oh, okay, okay. And my client was sent home. A very big result to be fair When somebody's facing murder It's life imprisonment isn't it yeah. What's that 25 years 25, 25 years. years But if you get 25 years You have to save 25 years After you are considered Before you are considered for parole Yeah because mm -hmm. I think sometimes They half it don't they I think on good They half in certain, certain offences Yeah but all violent related offences Over 7 years You have to save 2 thirds But for murder yeah. it's, 
if you get whatever you get, you have to save that yeah. before you are um, eligible for parole, before you can apply for parole. But once you get convicted of murder, your life's over, isn't it? Life's over. Yeah. Be realistic. Even yeah. if you're 20 years old, you got 25 year sentence, you're going to come out when you're 45. You're old, you yeah, have to yeah. stay inside, isn't it? That's what I say to people, young kids. Young kids, yeah. I say to them, before you pull that trigger or before you think you can go stab someone and they will die, they, there's a chance they can die. So before you go and do that, lock yourself up in your bathroom, stay there for 23 hours. And then think to yourself, can I do that for one year? Then think to yourself, can I do that for two years? Then think to yourself, can I do that for 10? <laughs> yeah. Then think to yourself, can I do that for 20? No then think to yourself, can I do that for 25? Is it worth it? Don't pull that trigger, man. Don't put your knives away. Don't do that. You're not ready for that. No man, yeah. no man is ready for that. Trust me. They act like big man. I've seen people cry in prison. No man is ready for 25 years in prison. Yeah. So like Tupac says, yeah. before you start busting shots, think 25 to life, make it cross your mind. Yeah, definitely, man. You went you quite viral on TikTok. Alhamdulillah. So, yeah, mashallah, that's good. Um, so how did you, like, what strategies did you use then to, like, um, get quite popular? You know what? I just, during COVID, I've seen a lot of people making videos and some clowns making videos. And yeah. I was like, you know what? <laughs> this guy, no disrespect to people, but this guy, if he can do this, of course I can do better. Yeah. So I started making videos and people liked them. I started sharing them. Alhamdulillah, all of a sudden... You know, we are where we are, alhamdulillah. Well, I'm quite viral, isn't Quite viral, viral, alhamdulillah. And I'm just, it's just a start to be fair because I've yeah. only been doing this properly for about a year and a half, two years now. And I've only been posting properly for about two months now. Yeah, yeah. Like every day I post now yeah, yeah. for the last two months. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see how it works. So my followers have doubled. Doubled, yeah. yeah the last it. two months from 40k on Instagram has gone to 80 something. From 50k on TikTok has gone to 100 something. Okay. I'm starting my YouTube as well now. Famous. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, it's doing well. It's just, it's just the start, isn't it? Yeah, yeah start. Whenever I'm on TikTok, I always see on the For You page, you're always popping up. A lot of other people post my stuff as well now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thing, isn't it? So educational messages, good people are educated. I don't say bad stuff. Yeah, definitely. But obviously, if you're like famous and you get viral, you must get some hate and stuff as well. So, Too much hate, brother. Yeah. Too much hate. But I've been getting that all my life. Mm. I don't let it affect me. See, haters are motivators. Haters are good because haters point out your flaws and your weaknesses, yeah, exactly. which then allows you to work on your weaknesses on and your hair, flaws yeah. That's it. and you do it better. And they, they are the best people to take out your weaknesses. You don't, you won't realize your own weaknesses. So when I get a lot of haters, you're doing this right, you're doing this wrong, you're doing it. Okay, I'm going to change that. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's like a, it's like fuel. Motivation. Yeah, they're helping Motivation. You uh, and it's good because if there's no if everybody is saying good stuff about you yeah. first of all it's not possible yeah you can't make everybody happy mm. so you have to have a few critics you have to and you have to have haters if you're doing something right you will have haters no there's no question about it mm. people will just be there talking behind your back but they're doing that because they are behind you isn't it so they they let them do what they want let them talk, let them, let talk. them talk, let them talk. The more they talk, uh, the more they burn, the more we earn. Jeez. You've done, obviously, Maurice Andrews Listers, you've joined the firm, you've become the director. Um, have you had any people trying to bring you down? Like I say, don't do business, any doubters? Loads, man. I've had doubters yeah. since I was about to go and study and go to university and I chose that I want to do law. I've had doubters since then. My own family members used to doubt me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect me. That's what I say to my kids. When people are doubting you, yeah. that's when you do that. What they saying you can't do, you do that do and you that, do yeah. it twice and then you take a picture yeah, yeah. and you show them, show them, you do it. That's when People that were doubting you first, they will, they will be telling, pe telling people how I met you. And it ha it's, I'm not boasting. It happens with me. The people who say, used to say, listen, even on open my firm, I oh, don't use him. He doesn't know much. He does not speak English properly. Judges won't respect him. Courts won't respect him. Them same people. Yeah. Yeah. Them same people now, they have to phone my office. They can't phone my mobile. All right. They yeah. have to phone my receptionist or my assistant or send in an email to get an appointment. But they're on board now. 
Alhamdulillah. So doubters and haters basically motivate you. They make you, man. They make you. They make you. Look, smooth seas never makes skillful sailors. Mm. You have to go through a bit of hardship to get that ease at the end. Yeah. And if everything is smooth sailing, it's not going to build your character. It's not going to build you as a man. I believe that. I believe that because I believe if you've got everything on a plane, everything got happens so easily for you. Mm. It's not going to reveal your true character. True character is only revealed when your back is against the wall, man. Yeah, exactly. When there's no other option yeah, but yeah. to get out. That's there's it. no safety net. <laughs> you yeah. are the safety net for your family. Yeah, yeah. That's when real character is revealed. Yeah, then you will kind of show then. So what uh, what motivates you? So uh, a lot of people ask this to us. What what's your unique selling point? Um, what's um, what's motivating you to do well? What motivates me is to keep going. It's it, motivation went about five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah, motivation went. Yeah, but I've been doing what I'm doing for so long now. It's discipline. It's in my routine. It's instilled inside me now. So what I'm doing is a routine it's regimental it's in, it's inside me it's in, instilled inside me motivation does not get you out of bed every day for five years yeah, yeah. Mm. it's something called dedication and discipline discipline definitely You're right consistency consistency that's commitment <laughs> that's king mm. that's what motivates me i've made this into a lifestyle get up early every morning go to namaz after that, go to the gym. After that, be the first in the office, be the last to leave. You know, you set an so example. Build a routine and build then follow routine. the routine. Keep it follow, consistent. Keep it consistent. You run the day. You can't let the day run you. Mm. So have everything planned. I have everything planned from before I go to sleep. Even on my phone. So when I'm going to get up, I'm going to go onto my phone, reply to a few DMs, reply to emails, yeah. then get up. I have to pray. I go to the masjid to pray namaz. Alhamdulillah, I'm chosen to go to the masjid to pray namaz. I don't go because I want to. Hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses me. Alhamdulillah, most mornings to go to the masjid. I said most because not every day I'm chosen. I go there, pray namaz. Then after that, I go to the gym. After gym, I come to the office. And it's like a... Sometimes I don't go to the office, sorry. Sometimes I don't come here. I would go to a different city, for example. I've been going to Central Criminal Court, the Old Bailey recently. Okay, I've okay. got a murder case happening there, so I've been going there as well. I've got cases all over UK, so some days I'm out. But my routine generally is the same. And it becomes a lifestyle, it becomes a habit. You have to become a creature of habit, which means doing the same thing again and again. Yeah. yeah and, uh, and you won't get bored. You have to have a tunnel vision. You have to think about why you started before you try and thinking about quitting. Because last thing you want is... Five, ten years down the line, oh, I should have done this. Well, do it. Now's the time. Do it. Don't think about it five, ten years down the line and think I should have done it. No, even if you do it, you fail. It's okay. You tried. You tried. You could do something else. At least you tried. Why should people choose Maurice Andrews Solicitors? Why should people choose Maurice Andrews Solicitors? Because Maurice Andrews Solicitors is the best firm in the UK right now. I'm not just saying it. You can ask people. I have done a lot of work and I've helped a lot of people get out of issues get out of cases and one thing i do is i can't guarantee that i'm going to win a case i can guarantee that me and my team won't leave any stones unturned in the preparation of your case mm. the rest like i said earlier is in the jury's hand yeah. yeah but one thing i can guarantee is i won't leave no stones unturned in the preparation of your case and if that results in you being getting found not guilty, then it does. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, what advice um, would you give to like maybe youngsters that are stuck in like the wrong lifestyle, and like how how would they be able to change their life? First thing, what I encourage all youngsters to do is is pray your salah, pray your namaz. It doesn't matter what you do. A lot of people will put people up. I've seen people put people off namaz. Believe you or not, oh, you smoke cannabis, why are you going to the masjid for? Why are you praying? You've got a girlfriend, why are you praying for? I've seen it happen. Mm. <clears throat> At the end of the day, when we're going to go in to have a grace, yeah. the first questions that we are going to be asked 
is going to be about namaz. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's the most important. So regardless of what you're doing in your life, what sins you are committing, because I know a lot of people get put off praying because of their sins. But the thing is this, your prayer will keep your heart light, will soften your heart. If you miss prayer and you're only sinning, then first of all, you're committing two sins, mm, yeah. missing prayer yeah. and your sin. So you're doubling up on your sin. Double, yeah. Second of all, the more you're going to miss, shaitan is going to get a grasp of you. Mm. And sooner or later, your heart is going to get black. And once your heart goes black, you know what that feeling is? That feeling is you are committing sin, but there's no guilt in your heart. You commit a sin, but you don't feel guilty about it. That's when Shaitan's got you locked. Shaitan's got you locked. But still, there's still hope. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. So, there is still hope. Yeah. But once the Shaitan has got his grasp on you, he's gripped you, yes. it's hard to get it's out. Hard to go, yeah. So don't lose your prayer, whatever you do, whether it's one prayer a day, mm. two prayer a day. Don't lose that, because once you lose that, you're just going to get sidetracked and life is not going to be good for you, or not going to go the way you want it to go. So that would be your advice to pray, basically. To pray, because sooner or later, you'll realize what you're doing is wrong. See, anybody can sit here and say, listen, kids, you need to study hard. You need to, you know, get a job. You need to work hard. You need to. One thing is this. Respect your parents. Of course. Regardless of what you're doing in the streets. Yeah. Parents come first. Yeah. Parents come first. Don't act like a gangster in front of your parents. Yeah. yeah. Don't act like a, a gangster and talk back to your mom who's taught you how to talk. Yeah, definitely. In front of your friends. You're all bro this and bro that. And then you're shouting at your mom who's taught you how to speak. Behave. You know, treat your parents with love and respect. They're the only, they're the only people who, if you're in the ICU, they're the only two people that will be there. If you've got parents, you know, you can gain Jannat out of them. Yeah, it's a Make blessing, the most yeah. out of them. Yeah, true. Make the most out of them, man. Benefit, benefit your parents and take benefit from them. Yeah, definitely. Anybody can sit here and say, because kids know what's right or wrong. The adults, people know what's right or wrong, man. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows the recipe to success. But why is the source different for different people? Why? Because they don't do it properly. Yeah, true. Or they'll do it for a certain time. Exactly. Or they know how to do it, but they won't carry it out. Yeah. More talk, less action. It needs to be the other way around. It needs to be less talk, more action. Yeah. People know what's right, what's wrong, man. Yeah, they yeah. just don't do it. I feel like sometimes it takes like you one know, it, wake it up call. It takes that one thing, but not me saying something will change him. And I wish he does. Hopefully he does. But yeah. the thing is, everyone knows what's right, what's wrong, you know. Yeah. But one thing I can say to people is, if you're doing something and you feel like giving up, think about why you started, man. Hmm. I see some rich people who want to be like, not rich, some people whose fathers are wealthy, who got wealthy families, and they gone into the life of crime for some reason. I don't know why. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's the, it's the status thing. It's not even about the money. Okay. Yeah. You know, but it is what it is, isn't it? So you meet a lot of criminals in prison. Um, so how, how do you... I meet a lot of criminals out of prison as well. Yeah. Even in prison, yeah, yeah. outside of prison. I meet a lot of <laughs> generally. I'm a criminal lawyer. How do, how do you deal with them? How do you deal with them? How do, in, in what sense? As clients. As clients, yeah. Oh, it's second nature to me now. Yeah. It's second nature to me. Some people, obviously, who are me are, you know... Uh, in the criminal fraternity, they may be like, you know, at the top, some people have a clients who are right at the bottom in the criminal fraternity. Yeah. But I treat all clients the same, yeah, you yeah. know. Clients are clients at the end of the day. You know, I try to respect all my clients and try to look after them because they've put their trust, they've put their life in my hands. In you, yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, it's a big statement. People come from all over the UK and sometimes they come here and they say, look, and I'll be so grateful from them. I'm not boasting or anything, Alhamdulillah. I'm very grateful for when somebody's come and put their life in my hands, essentially, their freedom. So, you know, do what you got to do. Yeah, yeah. It's a big thing, man. 
big responsibility. Yeah, you must feel a lot of pressure. Yeah? A lot of pressure. Yeah. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Responsibility, pressure. Alhamdulillah. I'm saying so. But diamonds uh, are formed under pressure. Yeah, exactly. Diamonds yeah. are formed under pressure. Yeah, exactly. People that have uh, been obviously proven guilty and been sentenced, mm -hmm. do do people like that have any regrets of doing a crime? Oh, there are a lot of people, man. And how, how do they, what do they tell, what, what's their emotions with, with you? Look, once I form a relationship with a client and I have a bit of a connection, they do talk to me. Yeah. And I've had big, big men. Mm. who've said to me, look, if I can only take back time and just get a normal job somewhere, nobody needs to know me. Yeah. And just provide for my family. Right now, my family are out there with no provider. I get a little bit emotional sometimes speaking to clients, but like I said, I have to kill my conscience. Yeah. You know, because I have to do again the next day. I have to represent somebody else. Yeah, you've got different clients every day. Exactly. Different clients and every case is different. Every case is different. Mm, every yeah, case yeah. is different, my brothers. It must be worse when um, someone's like innocent. Yeah, sometimes when I feel like somebody generally hasn't done anything and they're going down. Yeah, yeah. And the sentences are not a joke, man. They're not a joke. Years. Years, man. 15 years, 20 years. You see people going down for all sorts, man. So uh, what does uh, success mean to you? Success. Yeah. Success is uh, the main, uh, I would say, the main element of success in my life is I am, alhamdulillah, allowed to worship my Lord whenever my Lord, whenever the time is to worship my Lord. And nobody's out, nobody can tell me, no, you can't pray now, you can't do this now. I can. One of the ways of finding out if the Lord's pleased with you is He allows you to worship Him. Yeah, definitely. True, yeah. When you're praying, He's allowed you to pray in it. Yeah. True. Think about <laughs> it that. That's success right there. That's success, brother. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's success. That's success. So uh, where, where are you taking this, Maurice Andrews Listers? What's the next, what's the next phase? What's the future plans? International or? The world's your oyster. That's the way I say. The world is yours like Scarface. Jeez. Well, that <laughs> and he was looking at it. And there's a banner saying, the world is yours. But you know what, alhamdulillah, I've grown Morris Andrews Solicitors from a firm that was winding down to one of the most recognized firms in the country. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So we can only get better. This is the start. This is only the start. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I don't want to be, this ain't a chip shop or like, it's a service, isn't it? So I don't want to have offices all over the country. Why? Yeah. Why? I yeah. want people to service them. Exactly. I provide something that is unique. People can come to me and they do come to me. You know, Alhamdulillah. So you you are your unique selling point. You are your uh, yeah, exactly, man. Exactly, Babas. Alhamdulillah. So you've got a few supercars outside. So what's, your what's your favorite car then? My favorite car ever? Yeah. I love traveling in a s-class so the new true. ones are very hard to come by to be fair because of yeah. covid they're not they're not making them much the production has stopped but my favorite car i mean before they're not the new shape the one before this the last shape i had it mm. i had it for four years long drives you can't mess with that luxury. I, I don't drive much yeah. luxury yeah yeah i don't drive much the real bus move is being driven <laughs> so i don't drive much but sitting in in the s-class yeah I love it. I mean, it's beautiful. You can't even feel the journey. You can't feel no bumps. It's nice. Who's ever, whoever's driving the car, they always say it feels like you know, so light. Luxury, yeah. Lovely car. <laughs> I like the Lamborghini Urus. Again, long drives. I don't drive it much, but when I do drive it, it's nice. And short drives, I drive every day from home to work. It's only ten minute drive. Yeah. Uh, every day I do that. I love the Urus. The G wagon is good, but the G wagon. I don't like the turning on it. It's 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 not like the S class. Yeah, All okay. those Mercedes is a bit different. Very different. Um, favorite car probably right now is the Euros. To be fair, yeah. Um, just because of the practicality, I think it's more practical than the G wagon. I'm getting M5 as well. Inshallah, tomorrow I'm going to pick that up. My M5, oh, yeah. M5 new one. That's going to be my everyday car. Decent. Now. I want that. Inshallah.
Um, Smashing it, what color? The new one, orange. Orange, oh. orange, uh, killing nice it. Nice bright orange. Yeah. <laughs> I've got orange urus as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a matching orange. So yeah. I've got orange urus as well. I've got yellow urus and orange urus. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be matching the orange one. So I'm going to drive that now for a day because this urus is this. For long journeys is good and that, but it's, it's quite expensive. Fuel's gone expensive, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and it's not about being tight or being stingy. It's about saving. As businessmen, we need to save every single penny. Mm. You can't just start spending for free if you don't need to spend. Yeah, if yeah. I can, if a journey to London uh, or Manchester can cost me fifty pound, why am go- am I going to spend hundred pound to do that journey? It doesn't make sense. Even if it was a billionaire, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, it doesn't okay, make yeah. sense. It doesn't make sense. So I'm driving the Euros or I'm traveling in the Euros up and down the country right now. That's why when the M5 comes, I'll be okay. How do you motivate the youngsters? I would advise any youngster or anybody who wants to get into business, the first bit of advice would be is try to be your own boss as soon as possible. I mean, that was my approach. I'd either make £100 a mm-hmm. month when I'm working for myself and that was better than a thousand pound working for somebody else. What's the, what's the benefits? What the benefits, benefits? The, again, like I said earlier, the benefit of success is Allah point Allah allows you to pray whenever you want. Mm-hmm. I've had people come up to me and said, I work at a certain place and they don't let me pray. My boss is a Muslim, but he has an issue with me praying during work hours. No way. So it's basically like freedom. Basically. Yeah, freedom, you get your bro. freedom, innit? If, you, if you're in boss, you have your own freedom. Freedom, brother. Yeah. Even if you don't have the money, at least you got the freedom. Do what you want. Money will come. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. It will be hard. First couple of years. You have to ghost. You have to go ghost on people. All right. You have yeah. to go ghost on people. Try it. Try it. Yeah, try yeah. it for six months, one year. Okay. And watch the progress you make. First of all, try to go ghost on people. Don't text people or phone them first and see how many people get back into it. See how many, how many people get into it. See how many people are loyal, yeah? See how many people are loyal. Check the loyalty. See how much dead plants you've been watering. Mm. Over the years, you you to see yourself. Just go ghost mode. That's the first thing. Definitely. Try to get rid of the dead plants, the bad eggs, the bad apples. Just try to get rid of them, and that's a good way to do it. Just don't phone no one, don't text no one for six months, unless he was going to get in touch. Yeah. Apart from your own family, your mom, dad, your brother, sisters, nobody else will. I guarantee you that. So, what would be like the biggest mistakes people make when they first like go into business? They spend more money than they earn. They spend more money than they earn. Spending, yeah. So basically limit the amount of expenditure. Of course, sell, yeah. limit the amount. Of, I do five people's work here right now. I've got five staff members, but I can replace five staff members. I don't do five people's work, but I know I can replace five staff members. If they were to leave now, I can replace five staff members now. Okay. I can do it because I've done it before. You've done it before. Right? I've done it before. How big is your team? How big is your team? 15 people. 15 people. Decent. Alhamdulillah. So yeah, that, I do other stuff as well. But yeah, Morris Andrews is fifteen people. Alhamdulillah, and we got a nice team, yeah. young team, hungry team, people who are willing to learn. Yeah, there's people. There's no big egos around, you know. Yeah. Any other businesses you got? Any other pies you into? I do. I'm into property. Properties, properties yeah. yeah. Properties, and I've got a few investments abroad. All right, nice. Is it like a big market to get into? Or? Uh, I'm not doing law, I'm doing something else. Okay. You can't put your, all, all your eggs in one basket. So law is okay for UK, Alhamdulillah. I'm doing my, I'm doing my thing here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But other areas, I won't go back home. I'm investing. I'm going to yeah, slowly yeah. but surely leave. Yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. It's all up to Allah. Wherever your sustenance is written, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. where you'll end up. You know? Exactly. We don't choose. He's already made the decisions for us. Allah is the best of all planners. <laughs> Sometimes things won't go according to your plan. Yeah. But we get disheartened and forget it's going according to the Lord's plan. Yeah. So it might be, yeah, it might be um, to save you from something bigger. So of course. You in that of direction. course. Of course. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't answer your, answer your prayers straight away. Yeah. But we'll be waiting to give you something bigger and better. Always. Alhamdulillah. Exactly. Yeah, nice meeting you. Nice having a nice chat. Nice meeting, meeting. Nice meeting. Nice meeting. Late, but yeah. It's quite late, yeah. But. You know what it is? Um, I don't look at the time when I'm working. To me, this is work as well, to be fair. The nine to five people don't get anywhere. I'll say that again and again. 
my shift starts from 5 to 9, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's my working hours. That's my active hours. After that, I like to be in bed or relaxing at home. But yeah. from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., that's I'm active. Alhamdulillah. You work more than eight hours. It's business, and you put more time in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got you you you, got, you have to yeah, you have to try to be advantage over people. The way I see it, there's people out there that are working. That's the way. That's the mindset I've sort of got over the years now. And that mindset is you have to work like there's people out there working twenty four hours a day to take everything what you've achieved over the years away from you. That's how you have to work. Yeah, true. That's how you have to work. be the hardest worker in the room. Be the hardest worker <laughs> in the room, man. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for coming on, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank sure. you very much for having me. Just before I go, I would like to say one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, there's a defense for every offense.